Hello, Ace Chemistry. This is uh, chapter one, um, pretty much a review from Ace or pre-Ace Chemistry and or Honors Chemistry. And we'll get into um, moles uh, and equations later on, but this chap section is all about molar mass and um, the molecule itself, so isotopes and relative mass. So everything is based on the mass of carbon-12. That's how um, other atoms are massed out based on the relativeness of carbon-12. You have other names, relative atomic mass, you have isotopic mass, molecular mass, formula mass, they all basically mean the same thing. So do they really matter? Not so much. Um, you just need to know how to define it. So you have the periodic table. That's where you get all the masses from. And you notice all the periodic table has our decimals. And the reason why is, well, majority are decimals. And the reason why is because of isotopes. So this is a very common question you'll see in ACE uh, free response is what is a relative atomic mass? And it's usually worth two points because one, you need to know that is the average mass of an atom based on the mass of carbon-12. So it has two points, one saying the average mass of an atom and then based on um, the atomic mass of exactly 12 units of carbon. Lithium um, and all these titanium and cobalt, you notice they have, have decimals. And the reason why is because not every element has just one isotope. So for example, hydrogen has three isotopes, um, one, two, and three, which basically means they have different number of neutrons. You can see helium, they both have two protons, which are the red, but one isotope, helium-3, has one neutron, and helium-4 has two neutrons. They give you different masses. And lithium the same way, still has three protons, but the number of neutrons change from three to four, depending if it's six or seven. So the isotopic mass is whatever the number of neutrons and protons are in the isotope, because electrons basically weigh nothing. Um, so the mass is just the protons and neutrons, and the atomic number is the number of protons from the PR table, which is Z. So nucleon number is also called because it's the nucleus. The relative mass, um, molecular mass, is the actual the compound itself because it's molecular, so it's a molecule. Um, so for example, CH4 is methane or H2O is water. You also have formula mass, which is ionic compounds because of formula units. And again, it's just relative semantics of the name. Um, it's still the same way to find the mass. So MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide, or NaCl, sodium chloride, are ionic compounds because magnesium and sodium are metals, and OH and chlorine are anions or nonmetals. So to find the molar mass of each compound, you use the PR table. Make sure you multiply each atom by the number of atoms of each element. So for example, water, there's two hydrogen, so you have to multiply hydrogen by two plus the mass of oxygen. So at this time, you can pause it to see if you get the right answers. Um, but here are your correct answers. Make sure you know that the numbers make sense. Um, notice N2 is nitrogen diatomic because nitrogen is one of the diatomic elements. So accurate relative atomic mass. So a element obviously has isotopes. So how do you get the uh, decimals? So basically you compare the percent of each isotope in the universe, um, and that will give you each mass of a different percent and you can find the average atomic mass. So for example, here zirconium has a molar mass of 91.3. It has different percentages of different isotopes. So the majority of zirconium is zirconium 90, 
roughly 50%. And there's 91, 92, 94, and 96. So it's five different isotopes of zirconium in this example. How do you get that graph? It's basically just doing a mass spec. Um, you can see that a sample right here gets vaporized, so it's gaseous, they call it ionized, and it accelerates through a magnet and it gets deflected. Um, that deflection depends on the, its weight and a chart gets produced and detected. Here is another example chart. We have magnesium. Notice there's three uh, little mountains or hills. That means there's three different isotopes. You have magnesium 24, magnesium 25, and then magnesium 26. Magnesium 24 is the most abundant. You can see it 79%. And the smallest is magnesium 25 at 10%. So you, with this information, you can figure out what the average atomic mass is of magnesium. So what are the isotopes? Like I said, we have magnesium 24. So 24 means it has 12 neutrons and 12 protons because magnesium is number 12 on the periodic table. You have magnesium 25. Again, 12 protons because it has to be magnesium. So it means it has 13 neutrons. And magnesium 26, which means it has 14 neutrons. Notice they all have 12 because it has to be magnesium, which has 12 protons. So how do we find the relative mass, the average? Pretty simple. We have isotope 1 at 79%, which is a mass of 24. So to get percent into decimal, you move the decimal over two spots, or you divide by 100, and you get 18.96. Isotope 2 is 10% of 25, so 0.1 times 25 is 2.5. And then isotope 3 is at 11%, and 11% of 26 is 2.86. Add them all up and we get 24.32 with sig figs, which would be 24.3 because with sig figs you can only go to the 10th uh, spot in this example. So here's your first homework question. You're going to turn into the basket um, on the due date. It's also on page 5, which you need for the chart for germanium. That gives you an um, isotope graph. Alright, inside the atom. Atom is pretty simple. You have the nucleus, which is made of the protons and neutrons, and that is the mass of the atom, because that's where the protons and neutrons are located. The electron is in the orbitals, which go around the nucleus uh, which basically weighed nothing, um, so we don't count that as part of the mass. J.J. Thompson first discovered the subatomic particles, which he discovered the electron. <coughs> so this helped generate more um, experiments and to figure out what other parts of the atom they are located or <coughs> discovered. So Rutherford discovered the neutron. Uh, I mean a nucleus, um, which is the proton, and then um, Chadwick later on discovered the neutron. Mm. So, if we had a electromagnetic field, a plus and a minus, and we had our different charges of um, subatomic particles, so for example a proton, you would see that the proton when it goes through the field would go towards the negative, because it's opposite to track. <clears throat> If you had a negative charge, it would do the opposite. It would go towards the positive. And actually would be deflected more because it weighs less. An electron weighs a significant amount less than a proton. So it's going to deflect a lot more compared to the positive proton. And then if we took a neutral subatomic particle, a neutron, it would do nothing. And that's why it was discovered last because it doesn't have any real properties besides mass. So you can see this chart, it's also in your text. You use P for proton, N for neutron, E negative for electron. Some people put P plus for positive, but you can see the relative mass is very small for electron. 
compared to what a proton and neutron is. So a quick review, the Z is the number of protons, which can be found from the periodic table. It's the atomic number. If it's neutral, the protons and electrons are the same because they have to cancel out. And then the nucleon number, the A, is the mass, which is the protons and neutrons. Again, no electrons because it's negligible. Okay, so you can see A is the mass number or the nucleon number. Z is the atomic number, and then the element. So here are some uh, examples of atoms. We have vanadium, uh, zirconium, oh, I'm sorry, strontium, and phosphorus. So the number of electrons, these are all neutral atoms because they don't have charges on them, would be the same number of protons, so 23. And then the number of neutrons would just be the subtraction of the mass and the proton. <coughs> Zirconium would be 38 and 46. So again, 38 plus 46 gives you 84. And phosphorus, the electrons is 15 because it's neutral. And then it has 16 neutrons because it has to get to 31. Easy peasy. Isotopes, same number of protons but different neutrons. They can be written in two ways. You can write boron with the nucleon number on top with the protons on the bottom, or you can write boron 11 because you can find what the protons are looking on the PR table. And then um, you can also draw them out with the different protons and neutrons, as you can see in number three. We talked about hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Okay, so when are they not neutral? When are isotopes not neutral? That means they are going to gain or lose electrons. They can't gain or lose protons because it changes the element. You can't change the element. The only thing you can do is change the electrons to give it a different charge. Metals, quick review. Metals are going to lose electrons. That's why they become positive because negatives is electron. And nonmetals like chlorine here it's going to gain an electron because it is a nonmetal. And nonmetals are going to want more electrons to fill its outer shell, and we talk about later on in the course. So here is another question you want to turn in. Question number four from the page 29. Yes, you need to show work. So you have to show your subtraction or addition or whatever math you want to show. Um, to find the number of electrons of these ions. The mass, math is simple, but you do need to show your work. So we have potassium plus one. We have nit nitrogen minus three, oxygen minus two, and gallium is plus three. That is the end of part A um, for chapter one and two.